Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Monday, February 20th. Uh, here we are. Um, you know, I don't know what you do with this week because this is, well, this is the week of the Sunday of the Transfiguration in the three year reading cycle, but it's also Wednesday is. Um, Ash Wednesday, so I guess it's the week of the Transfiguration, which is, which is why I, um, the the uh, opening screen there is the the white, because um, the this last Sunday, if you're on the three year lectionary, the uh, churches should have been white. Now, um, different, the, the, at least for our church body, the two lectionaries place Transfiguration at two different points. Um, in, in the three-year lectionary, which is what I'm currently using, Transfiguration falls as the last Sunday after the Epiphany, uh, before going into Lent. And in the one year, hmm, I don't remember where it is in the one year, but it seems to me that it's, it's maybe it's just after Christmas. I don't remember. I don't remember. But um, I'm in the three years, so and, and those who were in the three year, the church was dressed in white yesterday, and so I switched to the white screens this morning. Good morning, glad you're here with us. It is. It looked like it was going to be gloomy today, but it is. Uh, the sun is coming out uh, here. It is uh, ten degrees or so here in in uh, the north woods of Wisconsin. Um, I've already been busy for a couple hours working on lesson plans and things for classes so it's just been kind of a goofy morning um yeah yeah so it's it's uh it's it's gonna be a decent day i think alexander is off of school but uh forensics he's he's in forensics and he and uh his friend kennedy are doing a um dramatic performance um a little a little kind of a little one scene play um, for their forensics competition. And that's today at Rib Lake. Um, so, uh, but not everybody in the area is out of school. He is. Um, they had parent teacher conferences on Friday, and I guess today is a in service for the teachers. Um, but I don't think they're out of school at uh, Rib Lake. So, Rib Lake is where the competition is. We have to take him to the school around three o'clock, and then they'll take a a bus down to Rib Lake. So, um, yeah, so he's on that today. So I suppose I have to go to Rib Lake this afternoon. Um, yeah, so there's that. Let's um, let's see who's here with us on this Monday morning. Kathy, good morning to you. Jill and John, good morning. Uh, John missed you yesterday. I told Jill to tell you that, but uh, I understand. Twisted your knee a little bit, she said. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you. Glenn, good morning. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. Michael, good morning to you and Karen. Yeah, I bet she is enjoying that warmer temperature. I'm getting ready for a little bit of that myself, but it's only February. Um, admittedly, there's only, what, eight days of February left, and we get through March, and then things, I want to say things start warming up in April, except that now I live in the North Woods, and so uh, things may not get, warm until the end of June. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, choices. And good morning to you and Deb and Grant Mushtak. Good morning and good evening to you, my friend. Renee, good morning. I'm going to refresh here quick and make sure nobody else popped in. Uh, well, I was yammering. Oh, there. Yep, they did. So there's Connie and Robin. Good morning to you guys. And Kelly, good morning to you. And Angelina, yeah, there you go, there you go. That that works, that works. So good morning, and uh, hi. So let's get into this. We're gonna. One of the things we're gonna do today is we missed the reading from Sunday, of course, from Job, and I I I don't want to go without that. So our our reading from the book of Job is going to be both Sunday and today. So it's going to be a little longer. It's actually quite a bit longer. Um, but it's it's the the poet, poetical prose 
so it, it goes fairly quick, um, even though it's several several columns in my book here doing it that way. Um, uh, it, it, it will go fairly quick because it doesn't fill the whole page like prose does. It's, it's the poetical stanza thing. So, all right. Well, if you have the Lutheran service book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order, I have my treasury of daily prayer right here, which is a lectionary in itself. It's the, it's the daily lectionary. Um, uh, that's in our hymnal as well. So and if you get the inserts, some, some churches use inserts in their bulletins. Uh, if you get the inserts or the pre-printed bulletins, the readings that are listed there are the same as what we're using here. So, All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 16, verses 1 through 4, 1, verse 1, verse 1, 4 through 6, 9 through 11. So Psalm 16, preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. The sorrow of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. My cup is my chosen portion and my, no wait, the Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, it will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. Can't say it better than that. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the psalm, though, because, as I said, we've got extra reading time going on here for our text. Uh, so we're going to begin here with what the reading was for yesterday, February 19th. Uh, Job chapter 14, 1 to 22. And then we'll go to today's reading, uh, Job 15, 1 through 23, uh, as we continue here. So Job chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. Man who is born of a woman is few of days and full of trouble. He comes out like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. And do you open your eyes on such a one and bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? There is not one. Since his days are determined and the number of his months is with you, and you have appointed his limits that he cannot pass, look away from him and leave him alone, that he may enjoy like a hired hand his day. For there is hope for a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and, it, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its root grow old in the earth, and its stump die in the soil, yet, the scent of at the, yet at the scent of water it will bud, and put out branches like a young plant. But a man dies and is laid low, man breathes his last, and where is he? As waters fail from a lake, and a river wastes away and dries up, so a man lies down and rises not again. Till the heavens are no more, he will not wake, nor be roused out of his sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath be past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? 
All the days of my service I would wait till my renewal should come. You would call and I would answer you. You would long for the work of your hands. For then you would number my steps. You would not keep watch over my sin. My transgression would be sealed up in a bag and you would cover over my iniquity. But the mountain falls and crumbles away and the rock is removed from its place. The waters wear away the stones. The torrents wash away the soil of the earth. So you destroy the hope of man. You prevail forever against him and he passes. You change his countenance and send him away. His sons come to honor, and he does not know it. They are brought low, and he perceives it not. He feels only the pain of his own body, and he mourns only for himself. I'm going to pause there. That's the end of chapter 14 here. But um, he's, he's as, as Job is, is mourning his life and suffering, and that if suffering is the is now going to be the extent of his days, if this if this um, concern that he's under, the suffering that as he's sitting in the ash heap and pot scrape, scraping his skin with the pot shards to remove the boils, um, if this is it, then that's it, and and that's the way it is, and he will die there. Um, Man who is born of woman is a few of few of days and full of trouble. He comes out like a flower and withers. We're all born dying. I mean, that's that's the condition of man since the fall. We are all born uh, to die, um, and and Job recognizes that. But what he asks is that that if God is going to bring about His end, then let Him die. Other things in creation. Uh, if they appear to be dead, they may rise again. You, you cut off the stump of a tree, and in the spring when the water comes, it, it may grow again. You, you cut the grass, and it grows again. Um, but a man, when you lie him down in the ground, when you, when you bury him in his death, he does not rise again, or does he? If a man dies, shall he live again? And yet we know that he, that he does. We know that he does. We know that the Lord longs for his handiwork, the work of his hands. Um, and we know that, that though we may lay low in the ground, that our sons may come to honor and greatness, we will not know of it. But on the day of the re resurrection, the renewal, we will live again in Christ. But for now, we feel only the pain of our own body, it seems, and we mourn only for ourselves. But yet we have the promise of life in Christ. Now, let's continue on here because we, we had uh, Job speaking this, uh, this, 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 is hope the right word? Well, the confession that death comes for all, right? That's really what he was saying is none of us gets out of here alive. And so we have a hope that is the Lord. The Lord is my cup. Um, and now in, in chapter 15, uh, his friend Eliphaz begins to speak again. Um, and it's, again, it's an accusation. And that's kind of how Job is. It's a, it's an, a, 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 a rotation between these friends speaking uh, and accusing Job. So now we go to 15, Job 15, verse 1. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, should a wise man answer with windy knowledge and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he argue in unprofitable talk or in words with which he can do no good? But you are doing away with the fear of God and hindering meditation before God. For your iniquity teaches your mouth and you choose the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not I. Your lips testify against you. Are you the first man who was born, or were you brought forth from the, before the hills? Have you listened in the counsel of God? And do you limit wisdom to yourself? What do you know that we do not know? What do you understand that is not clear to us? 
Both the gray-haired and the aged are among us, older than your father. Are the comforts of God too small for you, or the word that deals gently with you? Why does your heart carry you away, and why do your eyes flash? Then you turn your spirit against God and bring such words out of your mouth. What is man that he can be pure, or he who is born of a woman that he can be righteous? Behold, God puts no trust in his holy ones, and the heavens are not pure in his sight. How much less is one who is abominable and corrupt, a man who drinks injustice like water? I will show you, hear me, and what I have seen I will declare what wise men have told without hiding it from their fathers to whom alone the land was given, and no stranger passed among them. The wicked man writhes in pain all his days, through all the years that are laid up for the ruthless. Dreadful sounds are in his ears, and prosperity the destroyer will come upon him. He does not believe that he will return out of darkness, and he is marked for the sword. He wanders abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knows that a day of darkness is ready at his hands. He will not depart from darkness. The flame will dry up his shoots, and by breath of his mouth he will depart. Let him not trust in emptiness, deceiving himself, for emptiness will be his payment. It will be paid in full before his time, and his branch will not be green. He will shake off his unripe grape like the vine, and cast off his blossom like the olive tree. For the company of the godless is barren, and the fire consumes the tents of bribery. And they conceive trouble and give birth to evil, and their womb prepares deceit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, Eliphaz is not wrong. He's not wrong in what he's saying, um, other than his accusation towards Job. The one who is wicked will get his comeuppance, right? Now, not wicked in our judgment, but wicked in the eyes of the Lord. And the wicked do prosper. And we see it all the time in this world where, where the righteous are in poverty, uh, the faithful uh, suffer, but their suffering is limited by their faith, right? Yeah, yeah. Through faith in God, even, even suffering can be not so bad. God gives us not only a way out, but he also strengthens us in the face of it. The wicked, when they suffer, their suffering is greater. <laughs> the wicked man writhes in pain all his days through the, all the years that are laid up with ruthless, or, or that for the ruthless. Now, understand that in, in, the, in the time of Job, to be a... a wealthy as Job had been before all of this took place, uh, was to be blessed by God. And to be poor or destitute or suffering or uh, in, in some kind of illness or what have you, was God's will against you, that you were, you were sinful. And sometimes we say that um, even today. Sometimes we look at people in the midst of their difficulties and say, God has done this to him, but that's wrong. It's the old wicked foe who causes suffering. God allows it. Just as he allowed Satan to attack Job, God allows these things to test, to test the faithful. To, and, and, and when those same tests fall upon the unfaithful, they have no escape, and it drives them to their knees. But when the faithful are tested in these ways, there is hope. They have hope in Christ. They have the promises of God that he will care for them, sustain them, give them strength, and as has been promised through Christ, endurance leading to character and testing given an escape through Christ, a way out. Eliphaz is not wrong. Are you the first man who was born? No. It is Paul who says there is no sin no, I think it's Christ actually who says there is no sin on sin which to which man has not uh, already been exposed. And I've said that before. The old wicked foe doesn't have any new sins for us. He just repackages them. 
as time moves on, there's new ways of committing the same sins. And remember, all, all the old wicked foe wants to do is get our eyes off of Christ, to, to take our trust away from God and put it in ourselves. And when we do that, we're trapped within ourselves, and our suffering is our own. But when we look to Christ, when we look to Christ, when it is when we do not speak the condemnation of our own mouth, but we speak the promises of God in Christ Jesus, and we look to those, from suffering comes joy, believe it or not. Not joy as the world gives, but joy as Christ gives. Peace, not as the world gives. Peace which surpasses all understanding. Peace in Christ Jesus. So that even in the midst of suffering, even as Job suffered, we can look to Christ and say, your will be done, not mine. Whatever it is, Lord, bring it to an end for my sake. But if you choose not to, then let it be a witness to faithfulness in you. What is a man that he can be pure? He can't. Or is or he who is born of a woman that he can be righteous? You can't be. Because as Eliphaz says, the, the clean cannot come out of the unclean. And yet Christ makes us clean. Christ is not a trust in emptiness or deceitfulness. But he is a he is he is the branch which supplies life. And when we are connected to that branch, we have life in him. Even in suffering, he does not abandon us. Remember, before he ascended, he said, I will be with you to the ends of the age. And that isn't just the apostles and the disciples, that is you and I. He's present with us in his word and in his sacraments, the means of grace. We hear him speak to us through his word. We receive his promises. We're built up in him and we trust in him. That trust is not our own, but that which he's given us by his Holy Spirit dwelling in the temple of our bodies. And our life is lived not for ourselves, but for Christ who is our cup and our salvation. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life. Grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we continue this morning with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at right, the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Monday morning, fourth week of the month, I guess, let us pray. Oh, hey, Jerry, Jerry, good morning, and Verna, good morning, and there's Bonnie popped in. Oh, yeah, it's President's Day, that's right. All right, let us pray. As the day comes to its, oh, that's Monday evening, I want Monday morning. Dear Heavenly Father, there we go, thank you for keeping me safe during this night. 
Now I pause at the gateway of another week to ask you to go with me. I do not know what this week holds, pleasure or pain, health or sickness, sunshine or shadow. However, I am not afraid if you will be my companion. For you love me with an everlasting love and you guard and protect me from all evil. I need your presence every step of the way. At the beginning of this week, I ask you, ask only that you would stay close beside me. For I do not know what the future holds. I know who holds the future. Bless me in whatever I do. Make me strong physically, mentally, morally, and spiritually. Watch over me and over those whom I love. I ask this in the name of your beloved Son, who is my Savior and my Redeemer, my cup and my life, even Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who suffer, whether it be the effects of age or illness, and whether it be in body, mind, or spirit. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, and all who call upon your most holy name. Strengthen them in faith towards you and remind them always of the promise of life everlasting, which has come to them through your body and your blood. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our daily devotions for this Monday to a close. Things are falling quickly. Um, God's blessings will be with you tomorrow's. Uh, oh, I got Winkle tomorrow. Hey. Um, yeah, and I think it's close enough that I will get this done. Either that or I'll have to pre-record. I don't know. But either way, God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning for our daily devotion. God's peace.